Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. Today I'm going to be doing something very very different for you. I'm going to be playing with some colored pencils for the first time on film. So let's get into that introduction and let's get on with the video and see what happens. <laughs> Welcome back everyone. So as I said just now, it's all about colored pencils. But before I dive into that, let me just say thank you to all my subscribers that have just come on and all my assistant ones. Thank you so much for the support, everybody. And also, um, if you want a lot more than this, don't forget my live streams every Monday evening, every Friday evening at 7 o'clock p.m. And that is London time, of course. And join me for a watercolor and an oil or something else each week. At the same time, there is also my Friday film that comes up each and every Friday. I haven't missed one yet. Touch wood. And that will always continue. And I pick a subject, watercolor, oil or something else. And uh, yeah, enjoy that too. And if you want even more, don't forget, there is always my Patreon. It's a way of helping me finance all the efforts that I make in terms of my streaming and also the films that I create, not just for YouTube, but also for all my patrons. And there is also a private Facebook community for my patrons to enjoy and interact with me. So dive on over. All the details are in the description below underneath this video and have a look at it. If you want to get involved, know that you are helping me fund all the efforts that I'm doing and you get so much money so much money so much more for your money and it's well worth taking a look at and if you're interested then get involved that'd be great thank you so much in the meantime let's talk about colored pencils and let us talk about painting a robin in colored pencils okay so colored pencils and I found these in a drawer and untouched unused and I felt that it was about time I played with them and so I'm going to have a go today and we're going to do a little robin so I felt that um, it would be nice to share the four sets with you now these are polychromo sets there are 36 in this set and you can go mad and get tons more if you wish to this is a, an even earlier set and uh, it's again by Faber-Castell but the, I think these are a slightly lesser uh, quality than these ones. These are hexagonal or you know, they're, they're sided and they have an open end. They do tend to be the lesser of the uh, quality whereas these ones are nice chunky fat and sealed at the end and I think these are the quality ones among the two. But I'm going to use them both and we'll see where we go from there. So to start with I decided to do a robin. It was a lovely English quintessential garden bird and I'm using a dark grey not a black uh, in the polychromos just to draw out the shape of the bird you're going to see me making mistakes and adjustments they're not so much mistakes but they are refinements to the drawing I put what I think is right when I put it and start it but all the time I'm modifying the drawing and carefully doing it I don't want to put too much pressure on the pencil as it goes into the paper. For the paper I'm using Fabriano Artistico, the extra white hot press paper at 140 pound block. Now I actually have a large pad of this so I already have a drawing on the other side of this paper and I masked it off, put it in half and I simply made two paintings or drawings from the one sheet of paper. This lovely robin is sitting on a piece of fencing in my garden and I felt that it was just uh, apt. I didn't want to put any background in. I just wanted to concentrate on the drawing itself and therefore the bird. Now the wiring is just link fencing and it's going to be green but I just felt this really just set it off and finished off. You can also see that I'm using a rest. Now I know the polychromos don't smudge as such so they are pretty good from that point of view but even so there's still oil in your skin and you can uh, mess up a drawing and make it a bit scruffy so I just took that precaution I used the mid brown color uh, to put the dark around the head to begin with and then I'm using the light gray 
to put in the first um, layer as it's such on the bird itself and it gives it that lovely sense of blueness which robins have especially around the chest feathers where i'm working right now i wanted to leave a lot of white paper so i was really careful not to go too far in with the gray itself and i've come now to use a one of the middle blue colors now i haven't stopped to make reference to each color that i'm using but i will put a list of the colors in the description underneath this video so hopefully you can gain uh, the colors that I use throughout this pretty much not if not exactly each and every one of them but also bearing in mind that this is the simplest set of 36 polychromos and just one or two of the lotus color that I don't think are available anymore so I have tried to match any of those that I use with the polychromos out of the set now you can see me now putting in darker darker layers and over the top of the lighter blues so i'm going from light and i'm going to dark ever so slowly and just refining the shapes and each time i'm adding a little bit of detail into the feathers so that you get the sense of depth within the feathers themselves now with this sort of shading it is very very light i'm not pressing hard i will go in heavier later on and burnish some of the colors and blend them a little harder but initially i'm just going in and lightly making layers and this is the first this is a, a middle yellow color that i use to it's slightly it's like a deep uh, cadmium yellow in many regards and i put that over as a very very light flush more around the face and very light over the chest but now I'm coming in with a darker accent of yellow just to refine some of those shapes every time i'm looking and working in the way that the feathers work in other words the direction of the feathers and no point in trying to work against them it would look very very odd so the idea is to work in conjunction with the way the feathers work on the bird itself you do the same if you were working in somebody's on a human head with hair or even deed an animal dog whatever you always work in the direction of the fur i've come in with a darker yellow almost well certainly an orange now where i'm again working the darks into the feathers i'm leaving as much light as i can because once i've gone over the light i've lost it i can't get it back so i have to like a watercolor preserve my whites uh, so that i can work the highlights in uh, without having to go in with any other body colors or any other material to bring them back later on so i'm thinking all the time if i go too far i've lost it and i'm just using less and less darks as i move forward with this bird and now i've come in with a dark umber color well it's actually it's a, a slight umber it's a, it's a less of a dark umber it's more like a raw umber and that raw umber i'm coming around the dark shady side of the bird refining the feathers but again i am leaving some of those other colors that i've put already on in the other layers to refine the highlights on the bird and there's that big shadowy part to the left hand side i'm using the same raw umber to come in on the initial colors of the wing before going back to the shadows on the uh, left hand side of the bird i wanted to put in a dark umber now and i've gone in with the uh, richer umber the, the dark umber to give me that more solid um layer of the shadow and all the time i started to burnish it as well put more intense darks in there using the same color to come down and refine some of the feather structure in the back of the head just behind the eye and one or two shapes within the uh, face around the eye and it's areas where there are slightly darker shadows in the feathers and the areas between the orange and the blueness I'm using the same colors now to come around the eye and fix up some of the darker shadows that aren't the eye themselves but set the eye in the eye socket little areas of feathers where they break away and create a little bit of shadow just under the beak around the chest now I'm coming in with a nice ready orange and this is going to be beefing up some of that lovely red breast that we know these birds to have and I'm definitely sort of being 
very careful not to overdo it it is easily done so i'm going over some of the umbers to warm those up and i'm addressing some of the lighter areas in the chest that may need a little bit more attention but to give the depth to the feather and that's what i'm after is the depth in the feather i'm bringing some of those oranges across the blues as well there are one or two areas where it just pumped off of the orange and into the blue and i tried to replicate that just a little bit but i'm teasing the colors in i've gone for a slightly redder one now and you can see that it's just enriching the edges of that chest um coloring beautiful bird we just i mean we almost i think make it our national bird now i've come in with a very dark a bit of a black and uh, it's either black or a dark gray and i'm just reinforcing that shadow it is quite a dark shadow i'm putting a little bit across the top of the head coming down because there are some little dark flecks in those brown feathers and also linking up the behind the eye into them now the beak the beak i'm using a dark gray and i put in the outline to the beak first and foremost and then i used a yellow ochre or a light sienna just to put underneath the bottom mandible and then I put in a mid blue to the top of the bill. What I then did is use the white to burnish and try and make them a little less lines and more of a soft shape as a shiny bill would appear. So I fused a lot of those colors together by burnishing. Now I'm laying the first part of the eye in and I used a Venetian or Indian red for this one and it give that lovely accent and i put a little bit of blue around the highlight just a bit and then i put in the black over the whole lot and burnished it give it a nice little pressing feeling and just work those colors in together and that gives you a deep solid color which is really needed for something like this bird's eye and i want it to stand out now I'm going over with a bit of blue, mid blue, over some of those light blues, just to reinforce that blue color in the robin. And you can see that I'm just sort of tweaking some of the forms, lifting some of the feathers here and there before I move on to the next step. And it's, it's just lovely, the lovely combinations between oranges and blues. Now I'm working on all the shadowy areas underneath the tummy as it goes back towards the uh, vent feathers and the tail. Now for the legs, and I'm using a nice carmine color just to suggest the warmth in the, reg in the legs. I first off, I went and lined them out with a bit of an umber, but I then come in with a dark, and then I'm now using the carmine just to warm up. They've got a lovely rosy red feel to those legs. You don't see too much of that because they are in quite a bit of shadow. So there's a lot of black, and the toes in my photo were a little bit confusing because it was gripping around this very thin wire so the toes and the back claw were coming up to the front so it made it a little bit more difficult now i'm using the uh, the greens on the white and i use and chose a cool colored green there are a couple of cool colored greens in this set of polychromos and although my set's an old set i'm sure the colors selection are pretty much the same i don't think they would have changed it too much over the years but this is a lovely cool green and i then went in with a darker value of that green to give me all the shadow sides of each part of this fencing and it's an it's just link fencing but it really is quite interesting to paint or draw it in this manner because you don't see it as link fencing anymore they are shapes with forms and shadows and i come in with a really dark accent where the shadow of one goes across the other one and that's when you start to create the three-dimensional effect that the wire needed otherwise it would have been absolutely flat wouldn't have worked and it, you would have had an awful finish to it so it's the lovely contrast in the sunlight that creates the beautiful shadows and using those to great effect with these greens just created that three dimension now i'm coming back onto the other toe and the other feet and because of the angle it's quite a big knuckle joint on these uh, birds and the feet are very very delicate but as i said just now that because it's gripping around a small piece of wire very very hard to be so finely detailed what i did do is burnish some of the feet where you get 
some of the feet you know what I mean some of the feet where there were certain scales picking up light so I used the white just to burnish some of those together I also used a very small Tombow uh, mechanical eraser just to lift some of the pigment off and give me a little bit more light to go into I felt that it got a little bit heavy and I just wanted to um, get a grip with that uh, before I put it to bed and finish with it sort of thing but that one toe niggly little toe that was laying across the wire had to get that in and make it work now we're on the final bit i'm just working in the uh, area of the wing and the tail feathers and i'm using a series of light browns warm browns russets just to work that in a little bit of orange just to accent the edge of the feathers a little bit of blue down the base where it got a bit cooler and a little bit of the slate gray just to give it a bit of depth because after all this area of the bird is in shade and i wanted to depict that it's going to be dark but it doesn't want to be as dark as the rest of the bird and with that part all done and considered then i just want to put a little bit of blue and a little bit of buff into those very light vent feathers as they disappear into the tail and don't forget this isn't fully detailed like the rest of the bird because it is going away from us in a very severely foreshortened form and the last part really is just to put some darks into the feather and into the wing itself and just bring this to a conclusion now i've really enjoyed this uh color pencil exercise it's been great fun but i have known that it's really an exacting medium and that's that's good because it's challenging and if you would like to see more from me in the future then put some information or your thoughts in the comments below i'd love to read them and any ideas of any subjects that you'd love to see me draw in this medium moving forward i plan on doing a lot more because they are a lot of fun and if you get something from them let me know and yeah that'd be fantastic and at least i know you're getting something from them and i will enjoy thinking and doing some more in the future in the meantime i'm just going to wind this up now with one or two finish marks and that'll be it okay everybody i hope you enjoyed that i know it was a time lapse and i know if you want to see the full version you can go over and join into my patreon if you would like and you get that full version and so many more full versions of videos that i've done in the past and that would be great because you know you're also helping fund the efforts that i'm creating content for you to enjoy so with all that said and done i really do enjoy colored pencil it is a lot of fun and i'm so glad that i found my boxes in the cupboard after all these years and it was just great getting them out getting some paper out and having a go and that's what i would say to you if you've got a set of pencils at home that have been sitting there you're not quite sure how to use them and what have you take a look at this there's also a lot of other content out there on youtube uh, appertaining to color pencils so enjoy the medium i found it quite an exacting one i found it that you know all the layering the burnishing and the shading that you keep doing building it all up it does take time it's not like an oil or a quick watercolor it does take a little bit of time but really and truly it is so much well worth that effort and i will be doing a lot more in the future so if you want to see more pastel pencils from me pastel pencils did i say pastel pencils i meant colored pencils if you want to see a lot more from me then put a comment in the uh, comment section underneath this video give me some thoughts on that and i'd love to do some more for you just let me know and uh, add your comment that'd be fantastic and in the meantime as i said at the start if you're not a subscriber please subscribe to the channel it would be fantastic to have you on board. Don't forget the live streams each week, two of them at 7 o'clock Monday and Fridays and also the Patreon. With that all said and done, get your pencils out the cupboard. If you haven't got any, you can buy a small set, have a go, create your own bit of fun. And yeah, it's, it's so good. Anyway, enough. Take care, everybody. Happy painting. Catch you all in the next video. Don't know what it's going to be, but see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.